Joba. A new holiday-themed stat for Jolly on base average? Not quite. For anyone who might not know, it's the first name of legendary former Yankee Jabba Chamberlain. On October 5th, 2007, during Game 2 of the American League Division Series, a massive swarm of insects descended upon Jacobs Field in Cleveland and attacked Jabba Chamberlain while he pitched in the bottom of the eighth inning. A combination of environmental variables and in-sport circumstances would enshrine this game in baseball and Cleveland sports history as the Bug Game. As crazy as it sounds, this simple yet classic tale of man versus insect would change the course of Yankees baseball. And today, I'm going to brighten your Christmas Eve with a classic holiday tale that you can share with each of your loved ones tomorrow on the fly. <laughs> 2007. The last year Tobey Maguire suited up as Spider-Man, the year we were blessed with the greatest sports movie ever, and the year rookie phenom Jabba Chamberlain was called up to the major leagues for the first time. There's one lie out of those three. Good luck. You might not remember Jabba at his best, so let me remind you that he had some pretty high expectations when he got called up, and he delivered in his rookie season. He pitched in 19 games and allowed only one run in 24 innings while striking out 34. Good for an ERA plus over a thousand, and albeit a small sample. Finishing 94 and 68, the 2007 Yankees were the wildcard team, facing off against the 96 win Cleveland Indians in the division series. In Game 1, Cleveland and future Yankee CeCe Sabathia dominated in a 12-3 win. Yankees lefty Andy Pettit and future Roberto Hernandez Fausto Carmona were set to face off in Game 2. Pettit and Hernandez were dealing, with a third inning Melky Cabrera homer being the only run on the board for either side by the 8th inning. Jabba Chamberlain was on the mound in the bottom of the 8th for his second inning of work, pitching in the first playoff game of his career. And that's when they attacked. There are, of course, two sides to every story, and in that spirit, we need to take a break with the baseball talk and shift gears for just a second. Let's talk briefly about bugs. A midge is a type of small fly that live in aquatic habitats and provide food to a variety of freshwater creatures. Those that age and leave their underwater habitats before being eaten join together in flight as a large swarm and try to reproduce. They only have a few days before death, and there's no tinder for these guys, so it's tough out there. I really wish these were bees, because a bumble joke would have worked so much better. So midges are attracted to warmer temperatures, so you wouldn't expect them to be flying around at a late night game in October. The very rare combination of variables that allowed for this story to happen is what makes this story so interesting. It was a then rare 81 degree first pitch on a rare start time of 5.09 p.m. It was pretty humid, and there was some strong wind that might have helped guide the swarm to the stadium. So you've got the temperature, you've got the humidity, the wind basically acting as the swarm's personal uber, and the bright stadium lights were essentially a giant magnet for these guys. With just the right mix of circumstances, a swarm of midges descended to the mound to meet Jabba Chamberlain in the 8th inning, and he just couldn't deal with them. These swarms can be so big that meteorologists sometimes see them on their radars. Yankees first baseman Doug Meehan, nope, not doing that, was quoted saying, I just remember Jabba grabbing the back of his neck to wipe off sweat and his hand was black, full of bugs. You try to block it out, but they were so thick that every breath you took, you'd either inhale them through your mouth or through your nose. Jabba had to stop five pitches into the inning and Joe Torre sent the trainer out with some insect repellent, but it turns out that that stuff is actually really attractive to these little guys, so that did nothing but make Chamberlain's night even worse. If I wanted to hear more about the failures of Yankees training staffs, I'd make another video on the 2019 Yankees. Cleveland's trainers were more familiar with the bugs and knew that the repellent would only make it worse. Of course, they didn't feel like sharing that with the Yankees. I don't think that's the kind of home field advantage baseball intended for. With the bugs swarming the mound, the rookie right-hander who dominated in the regular season started to fall apart. He walked Grady Sizemore on four pitches to lead off the bottom of the eighth. He'd only done that once that season. He immediately followed it up with a wild pitch advancing Sizemore to second, and two batters later threw another wild pitch to Victor Martinez which tied the game at one. He then hit Martinez and walked Ryan Garko before getting Johnny Peralta to strike out to end the inning. Roberto Hernandez and the repellent Liss Indians, having more experience dealing with these things, adjusted pretty well. Hernandez, ball in hand and bugs in eye, still finished a clean ninth inning with two strikeouts. The juxtaposition of Jabba and Hernandez's outings in the midst of the sea of bugs on the mound made for one of the defining moments of Roberto's career. The game went to extras, the bugs went away, and the Yankees went back to the Bronx down 2-0 in the series after Travis Hafner's walk-off single in the 11th inning. Cleveland clinched the series win in Game 4 a few days later. There was the Yankees season before the bugs, and there was the Yankees season after the bugs. 
If Jabba doesn't get distracted, given his, albeit small, but still nearly flawless track record, he probably gets through the inning no problem, and gets to hand the ball off to the greatest closer of all time, who dominates in the postseason. Especially with the Yankees winning Game 3, that could have changed the course of the entire series. Manager Joe Torre severely regretted not pulling everyone off the field when he could, and it would be one of the last games he'd ever manage as a Yankee before his legendary 12-year Yankees tenure came to an end, as the team transitioned to the Joe Girardi era the following year. But you can't change the past. The Mitches came for Jabba Chamberlain, and not only did they take away the Yankee season, they took away a potential Yankees-Red Sox ALCS matchup, which would have been the first time the Yankees would have been in the championship series, and the first time the two teams faced in the playoffs since the Yankees historically blew their 3-0 series lead three years prior. These Midges have a really short lifespan. We're talking a matter of days once they can fly. So these little stinkers had only a few weeks to live, and they decided to use the little time they had to ruin the New York Yankees season. How adorable is that? I know tons of petty Mets fans who'd gladly take that trade. Through 2007, the New York Yankees had made the playoffs in 13 consecutive seasons, winning four World Series championships in that time. The season following that infamous bug attack in Cleveland, they missed the postseason for the first time in almost a decade and a half. Talk about a buzz kill. <laughs> but sometimes, everything works out in the end. The Yankees came back in 2009, the year after they missed out on the playoffs, and went on to win the World Series. Jabba got his World Series ring and even had a second by the end of his career. His final appearance in Major League Baseball came in 2016, pitching for the Cleveland Indians. Having not won a playoff series since 1998, among other reasons, the so-called bug game became a staple in Cleveland sports history, and I'm glad we were finally able to talk about it in a video. If you don't think this is the kind of story that can stand the test of time, hotels in Cleveland still reference this game as an example of why man should be cautious of these little guys, nearly two decades after they brought the titans of baseball to their knees. Thank you all for watching, have a very Merry Christmas, and I'll see you all in 2022.